Hi, I'm Joel Lehman. Welcome to Sports Sports Media. Our aim is to bring you the latest news, stories and interviews from around the region of the East Midlands. We're here at the iPro Stadium where it's been a busy summer of change already. We caught up with Derby's leading man Chris Martin to find out his thoughts about last season, the future and what it takes to make it as a professional footballer. <laughs> Alright Chris, welcome to Support Sports Media. So, last season for the last um, playoffs, we'll skip the season, obviously your top goal scorer. We'll touch on that first. Top goal scorer, how was that? Yeah, obviously, to that point, my best season um, in terms of goal scoring. And it hadn't happened in a little while. It was a few years before that that I'd managed to score so many goals and I went through quite a big lean patch. Um, it was a bit of a journeyman at times in terms of the low moves I had to make and, and trying to kind of find my way a little bit and, and find my way back to form and landed on my feet, I suppose, with a move to Derby. Um, Nigel Clough bringing me in. Uh, and giving me the number nine jersey really gave me a lot of confidence and he told me that I was going to be the main striker and I took kind of um, kind of thrived on the pressure of, of, of being that guy um, and obviously playing in a very good team um, attacking football but creates a lot of chances for me so for me to, to score the goals I suppose is, is what, what was expected of me um, but it still obviously uh, was a good achievement personally and, and collectively last season as well I think um, with where we got to, um, especially we weren't in anyone's pick probably to get into the playoffs, so I no. think that was a, a big achievement. I mean, that playoff second leg, Brighton, I mean, must have been some good feelings. Yeah, I think all the lads will probably look back and, and remember, remember that that feeling and obviously the fans coming on the pitch and, and, and the exchange and we really built up a great relationship I think with the fans as well last season, um, which was something special. Uh, and I think that will live long in the memory for, for quite a lot of the lads. So, this season, uh, first and foremost, it's actually been read that you have been described as the Championship's Diego Costa. Have you seen that? Yes, I have seen it. Um, How does that make you feel? Uh, well, I'll take it as a massive compliment, obviously, yeah. to what a the kind of player that he is. Um, I'm not sure he'll take it as a compliment, uh, but nice. No, yeah, it's nice to get a bit of recognition, I suppose, at times. Um, but yeah, I've got a long way to go before um, I get anywhere near uh, the kind of success that he's had so far. But um, yeah, I enjoy the responsibility of being the, the lone striker and, and a bit of rough and tumble. And yeah, yeah, I think you have to have that in the championship as a, as a striker. You're going to get kicked about by uh, by the big centre halves, and you have to deal with it. And I quite enjoy. Um, I do quite enjoy the battle. Yeah. Is there any battles that? Like, let's say you look forward to a game and you think that's going to be a battle. Like, for example, I was at the Forest Derby game at the City Ground, and it's fair to say, I mean, you upset uh, Darla, the keeper. Now, is there anyone you look forward to playing against? You? I, mean, I wouldn't say no any any individual, uh, really. Um, but yeah, I just enjoy it. I enjoy the banter and, and just kind of getting involved and getting in the mix a little bit and upsetting a few people. I think sometimes you can, you can get into people's heads and that can give you a little slight edge. Um, in terms of trying to win and maybe put people off their games a little bit and I think I enjoy it and I think um, if you if you give it out you've got to take a little bit of stick as well and that's certainly the case. It's good that you enjoy a battle. Um, so it's fair to say uh, you missed what I say a quarter of the season with the injury mm -hmm. and you still come out top goal scorer and obviously we mentioned the goals but that must give you a little bit of pride in the fact that you can be top goal scorer, yet you miss a quarter of the season. But on the other hand, it must be a bit deflating the fact that they relied on you so much. And we asked a few Derby fans, and they said the downfall of the season was they, they miss you. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I think obviously it coincided with us going on a bad run of form. So I think sometimes you can become a better player than what you are whilst you're injured um, if things are not going quite right on the pitch. And I think that's probably the case in what happened. But I think. I think there were several factors. Um, obviously, we had injuries to other people as well at the same time. Whilst I was injured, obviously, Darren Bent got injured. Uh, Johnny Russell was injured at, at a certain time, um, whilst I was as well. George Thorne and, and John Eustace as well in another key position for us in the terms of the shape and the way we play. Um, so, yeah, that's. It's, it wasn't just my injury, the fact that we, we hit bad form. I think that possibly contributed to it slightly, but also people lost form and, and lost a bit of confidence, I think. and and. Obviously, with the confidence issues, that can sometimes snowball um, in a positive way, and um, as we've seen in a negative way as well. And it's difficult to kind of 
come back from that after you've had a run of games where you where you've lost confidence, and I think that is uh, that's what happened at some point in the season. Would you say at the start of the season, obviously, it's fair to say, like you said earlier, no one expected you to be up there. But when McLaren came in, for example, two years ago, was his always his goals Premiership, and was it the start of this season? Was it always Premiership or? Um, yeah, I think it was his goal and I think it was the players' goal as well. Um, individually, we wanted to, to get promoted this season. Um, I think last season was perhaps slightly different in the fact that we, we weren't expected to do it. And yeah. I think the manager said a couple of times, he called it the innocent climb a little bit in the fact that we weren't expected to, but we kind of rode the wave a little bit um, and everything kind of snowballed in, in a real positive manner and we were able to get a hell of a lot of wins in a row. and and different things and we kind of, I think that kind of matured as a team um, along with that success and yeah it was, it's always been a target I think and that's that's the reason why several players and, and quite a lot of players would come to Derby because they've seen it as a bit of a sleeping giant in the championship that could progress into the Premier League but I think that's obviously the case with a hell of a lot of championship teams yeah. as well there's, there's so many big teams in the league um, that are lo looking to get out of it so it's tough but I think I've always held that amb ambition and I think obviously the manager since he's been in and, and even the football club as well, that's the direction they want to go in and really try and hard to, to get there. It was said this week on Sky Sports that the Championship is the toughest league to get out of. We're going to talk about things like that later but would you say obviously you got promoted from League One and you've been promoted from the Championship with Norwich, do you think it is the toughest league? Um, yeah, I've not... I've not played too many games in, in the uh, in the Premier League, only a couple, um, so I can't really comment on in terms of how tough that is. But I think out of the other leagues I've played in, obviously the Championship, League One and League Two, and I would say yeah, it's most definitely the most competitive from top to bottom. I think you see it week in week out in terms of the bottom teams beating the top teams, um, and it's just there's just not much of a gap between the, the qualities of the teams. And I think when you look at other leagues, um, even around Europe and, and the Premier League as well. There's such a big gulf between um, the top and the bottom, and that's just not the case. And that's what makes the championship such such exciting um, yeah. at times, and also um, so competitive. I mean, you look at that last day, and the highlights for all the games going around. I mean, Ipswich were in and out. Wolves could have been in if a couple more goals. Yourself yeah. fell out. Just insane, and it is exciting, like you say. So yeah, it's a great league. Must be good to play in. Yeah, no, I, I really enjoy it. Um, obviously, I'd like to play at the highest level as well. Yeah. That's something That's the we, game. we would yeah. like to get out of it, but like you said before, it's a tough one. So, you start at Norwich, Norwich lad. Uh, how was it breaking through into Norwich's first team for all the youngsters out there that are trying to get into professional football? How do you find it? Um, yeah, it's, it's tough, it's hard work. Um, you've obviously got to put, put the hours in, you've got to be dedicated. and. I think also along the way you've got to have a little bit of luck. Um, I found that out when, when I made my debut for Norwich. Obviously it was a lot of hard work. I joined there when I was 10 years old. Um, made my debut when I was 18, but to make my debut I had to have, I think there was three or four injuries to players. Robert Earnshaw was injured at the time. Um, I think Dion Dublin was injured, a couple of few other players. Um, and that's what gave me the chance to, to get on the pitch. and. That you have, you have to be fortunate sometimes in, in that respect, and I was, and everything kind of snowballed from there. I scored a few goals when I first broke into the team, and then, as they say, the rest is history. But it's it's obviously tough to get your chance, and you have to keep plugging away, and then just hope you're good enough, really. And I was fortunate enough to get the chance and, and I mean, take it. You say Earnshaw and Dion Dublin. I mean, it's not bad to learn off them, and you probably had Huckabee as well. Yeah. So I mean, did you learn anything from those guys? Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, yeah, I had a real, really good upbringing in terms of football um, for, throughout the, right throughout the academy um, in terms of the coaches I worked with and the players I saw on a daily basis and, and like you just touched on there as well, the players that I played with when I was younger and really learned from um, and gave me advice. Dion Dublin was terrific at that. Um, you could go to him with literally anything, it didn't even have to be about football but he was, he was really, he had time for everybody. and. Obviously, he'd been there and seen it and done it for for so long, and we were obviously really appreciative of the fact that he would give us that advice, especially as youngsters, because it's not it's not terribly easy. Always talking to the older pros when you are a young lad um, can be a little bit intimidating <coughs> at times. But for somebody like that, for me, he was brilliant, and and also all the other lads. They were 
and they were very good. So I think I was quite fortunate with with the players that I kind of broke uh, broke through with. I mean, Holtie had a good few years after he got into Premier League, didn't he? And that came from nowhere because he had been released or well, let go from Forest. And mm-hmm. was he a good professional to work with? Yeah, definitely. I I think I learned a lot from him. Um, he probably learned a little bit from me. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think. Um, yeah, no, that, I think that gives everyone hope as well and, and when they see his story and his journey. Um, and I think there's been a few others, Ricky Lambert, uh, Glenn Murray at the moment, who's doing yeah. very well. I've seen that journey from him starting in League 2 with, with Shrewsbury um, and then playing in, in each league um, in consecutive years. So he went from League 2, League 1, Championship, all the way to the Premier League. And once he got there, done very well. And I think that gives everybody encouragement. Um, and it's a, it's a real kind of fairy tale story almost and full credit to him for, for obviously doing it and I think he's kind of a bit of a trailblazer type thing for, for other people yeah. to kind of copy because a lot a lot of times people have said that you, you can't do that you can't go from league two and play in the premier league it's unheard of and that's kind of obviously I, I've seen that and, and been encouraged by that and hopefully I can yeah, replicate well. certain things about it as well. Brought yourself to Derby, signed for Derby, uh, why Derby and why the East Midlands, any reason? Um, it's a very good club and they wanted me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nice to be wanted. Yeah, well that helps. Um, <laughs> but yeah, obviously leaving, um, leaving Norwich was my only permanent club before then. And To be perfectly honest with you, I said to a lot of people, if, if things would have worked out, I would have probably spent my whole career at Norwich. Yeah. If, if uh, in an ideal world, it doesn't obviously work out that, that way all the time. But um, obviously being uh, from there and, and family still living there, friends and, and stuff all being Norwich City fans so yeah that was that was my ideal club um, but like you said before that journey came to an end and I think I picked a, a very good club in, in Derby and I was obviously grateful for the fact that they wanted to sign me and, and I probably didn't appreciate the size of the club um, before I came in but I, I learned very quickly and it was a pretty good decision I suppose how it's all worked out. After being on loan and everything in that gap period where, like you said, you're a bit of a journeyman then after not really wanted it, Norwich, you just said, would you say it was nice to become, like, to score the goals last season and to become like a star man, leading man at Derby? How did that make you feel? Um, yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, obviously, I've not been used to it for a little while and and it was nice to, to kind of prove to to myself that I could still do it and, and to other people as well. I, I always felt like I, it was, I was able to do it and um, it's quite satisfying that, that that kind of bet bore out and I was able to do it. Does that ever get too much? Like, let's say you're both out, you have a nice little meal at TJ Flyers. <laughs> well, Nando's. Like, Nan- yeah, Nan- it, happened, it, it happens at Nando's quite a lot, obviously, if you go out with the kids and stuff and people come, but I think once, once it's happened for a few years and you've been used to it, um, do you mind it? No, it, does, it generally doesn't bother me. I think certain people probably it does, um, and I can understand why they obviously want their privacy and stuff. And if they're out with the kids and different things, but I think it happens reasonably often. You kind of take it in your stride and get used to it. It's Ten seconds out of your day, yeah. it's, it's not really a big thing. Fair so. enough. And the fact that you're where some or most people would want to be, do you know what I mean? You, I mean, they're all Derby fans and. You're playing for Derby. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's too much to ask to take a few seconds out of your no. day, especially even more so for the young kids and stuff, because you can really make their day. I don't think sometimes you wouldn't appreciate how much it can actually have a, have a positive effect on them. So yeah, it's, we're, I'm thankful to be in the position I'm in, and I would like to think that if I was that little kid going out for an autograph that I wouldn't get turned away. So Did you used to do that? Please. I didn't, no. I haven't done it, but if I was, I, I, yeah. if I was in that position, then you'd like to think that somebody would give you the time of day. So, Derby County, obviously, you've got quite, like you said, a lot of young players, and I mean, you've got some talented English ones as well, with Hughes, Lingard, and Ince. So obviously, those two are on loan. Mm-hmm. Uh, how do you see them to their future? Um, yeah, really positive. I think they've had a, had a good effect on us, um, especially uh, Tom Ince with the, the amount of goals he scored and the important goals that he scored. Um, obviously, they turned out to be not quite enough for us, but. At the time, they were extremely important goals, and yeah, he's been a real good character around the place, as, as Jesse Lingard has as well. And I can certainly see why they're um, why they're Premier League players and they're in, in the position they're in because they're 
got some great talent. Do you think they can go on to being England superstars? Or? Um, I think it's a bit, probably a bit early yeah, to judge whether, whether they can, but I think, like before, like I said about Jordan Ive, I think those two have, have also got all the skills and, and they've got the, the potential to be. Um, what their path is going to be is obviously difficult to predict, but I think um, if they keep at it and, and work hard and show the attitude that they've shown coming yeah. here um, and the work ethic, then I think they've, they've got a great chance. If you were to tell young lads at Derby coming through, how, if they're breaking through, what would you tell them uh, the key is to being successful and getting into the first team? Um, being good enough. Yeah, that might help. Yeah. Um, I think, I think, like a few things we've we've spoken about before. Obviously, you've got to be mentally strong uh, and believe in yourself. Um, I think you've got to work extremely hard. It doesn't, it doesn't just get handed to you. You have to work hard, and uh, it sounds it sounds boring and it's all cliche yeah. sort of things, but they are that is because they're true. That's why they get said quite a lot. And obviously, before have that little bit of luck maybe to to get yourself in there. But I think you've just got to keep believing in yourself and, and, and have that real work ethic and, and desire, real desire to, to want to be successful and I think w with that I think you can achieve what, what you want to. Obviously you got promoted with Norwich, you missed out uh, this year with Darwin last year, but what would you think is the key to success in the Championship, if you could break it down? Others? Um, I think the key to obviously being promoted or, or winning any league is consistency. Um, that's that's probably the, one of the, the biggest points. I think consistency, obviously individually and as a team, if you can if you can be seven or eight out of ten every week, you're going to win a hell of a lot more games than, than what you'd lose. And I think that's something that we've been striving for this season. We've not managed to quite quite work out, but that's what the other teams have had. You look at Bournemouth and, and how consistent they've been, and and even last season when you look at Burnley and Leicester and. They just performed well week in week out, and the, the better you perform, the, the more chance you give yourself for winning games, and that's something that I think every team is striving for is that consistency in that. I mean, it's fair to say you no longer just bully your way out of the championship. You look at Bournemouth, play football. Watford play great football, and yourselves up until your bad blip were playing some great football. Yeah, I think there's you can get it done in different ways in terms of the footballing philosophy. Um, I think. Obviously, you have to work extremely hard um, and have a little bit of luck on, along the way. A few decisions go for you here and there can, can obviously always help. But yeah, there's different ways. Obviously, you look at Swansea done it previously. Norwich yeah. played good football when they got out of the league. And, um, but then you look at somebody, perhaps they might not appreciate me saying it, but somebody like Burnley, who perhaps didn't play as, as free flow and attacking yeah. football, but they played extremely effective football. Um, they, they knew what to do and, and what decisions to make at the right time and, and managed games really well. Um, so I think you can you can get the job done in, in, in a variety of ways, but I think, uh, like I said before, all those guys had real consistency in their performance levels and, and managed to do it week in, week out. So we're ending the se end of the season. Um, how long is the period where you have time off, you switch off from football or you switch off from training and then when does the planning begin for next year for yourself? So obviously before pre-season starts, when do you start right, I'm getting ready for the next season? Um, now probably, um, it would have started I think obviously the club and the manager would start now in terms of who he maybe wants to bring in um, and how they want to go, what direction they want to go in terms of playing staff. And, um, yeah, for me, I've, I thought a little bit about next season, but um, I think it's it's key and yeah, it's real good for you just to get away and not think about football for at least a couple of weeks. Um, have some time with the family, uh, get some sun somewhere. Uh, and then after that, I think, yeah, it'll be concentrating. I like to, to set um, goals for myself normally at the start of each season. And I think, I think it's quite good to obviously work towards those. I think quite a lot of players probably do the same thing. But that will start probably in a few weeks' time. Um, but the, tr the training pre-season, I think, um, starts for us uh, on the 25th of June. Um, so it'll be roughly around six weeks before the season starts. Um, but nowadays, obviously, uh, we still we get programs over the summer that we have to we have to keep um, keep up to date with, and, and still obviously working throughout. You don't get total time off. You have to maintain um, your professionalism, I suppose, over the summer. Um, 
you can't you can't really switch off for too long, maybe a couple of weeks, and then you have to get back on it. Many of lads struggle with like switching off and gaining weight, and uh, probably must up now. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a tough or um, obviously because you're not really training as much every day? Maybe yeah, maybe a little bit for um, over the summer. I think you won't come back in as good a shape. I don't think many people come back quite as good a shape, but I don't think I don't think you'll be far off yeah. the kind of shape that you were in before. And you can't really allow yourself nowadays. I think maybe maybe 15, 20 years ago that was kind of the case, and you switched off totally from from the game. And pre-season was a time to get fit. Now pre-season is not a time really to get fit. It's obviously you get fitter, but you don't. It's, if you don't start from yeah. scratch and and, nah. and work away all the way up, up you kind of have to keep ticking over and 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 obviously pre-season to get the games back into your legs and, and get match fit. Really, um, that's that's what pre-season's about. So uh, yeah, I think um, yeah, gone are the days of uh, obviously putting on a few stone over the sun break. Bet you dread pre-season that way. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not a massive fan of running, but it has to be done. You have to just get through it. But I think. That's, that's part of pre-season as well, is the mental grind of it and, and having that mental strength to get through it. That's that's what the managers are looking for. It's not necessarily just all physical work. It's can you push your body to the limit um, and struggle physically, um, but also mentally keep yourself going. And yeah, sometimes it can be tough, but I think uh, having all the lads around and having that encouragement is good. Um, and pre-season can be real good for, for building team spirit and, and going through kind of tough times together and helping each other through. What's life after football for Chris Martin? Obviously not writing songs, but... Good question. Um, I'm not sure right at this moment in time. Um, it's something that I'm starting to think a little bit more about. Um, but at the, yeah, at the moment I've not gave it, given it a great deal of thought. Um, obviously only being 26 you kind of get caught up in the moment a little bit sometimes you think, but retirement for for us can can come pretty mm -hmm. early so you need to kind of plan for for those kind of things but um i like to think i'll be able to do something but what that will be i'm, I'm not sure yet all right well thank you for joining us today thank you. Cheers. It's a pleasure i'd like to thank everyone here at derby county including chris martin and colin gibson for allowing us here at the ipro for more local sporting news stories and interviews follow us on twitter YouTube and find us on Facebook, Sports Sports Media.